Today, we're going to be talking about tips and hacks for staying on our whole food plant-based lifestyle while we travel. Now, before that, though, I just wanted to give you guys, they can watch the, the full video and I'll put a link to that, but just give you guys a, a brief uh, time just to talk briefly about your journey as far as becoming whole food plant-based and, and the benefits of it. Okay. Well, since I went first, I'll start first. Um, yes, this wonderful journey started for me on July 13th, 2016. And the backstory is that what drove me to making a change was my knees and my feet. We had been in Ireland on a wonderful, uh, not a cruise that time, it was actually a land tour. So by the time the trip was over with, I mean, my feet hurt and my knees were causing me so much problems that I wondered what I was going to do come September when we had another trip planned to uh, China. So that took me to, yeah, that picture of the, oh, those were great. That one picture of me on the right there, or at least it's my right, where I'm sitting down, that was in Ireland on that trip. And so was that other picture. We were at the uh, Titanic Museum. And you can see how big I was uh, at that point. Well, when I got home, I weighed 257. And now I'm 127, so I've lost 130 pounds. But when I came home, I didn't know what to do. You know, we've all been on diets all of our lives and tried this and tried that and been successful short term, but nothing seemed to ever last forever until I found this way of eating. And it all came about through what I call a little miracle because I had a friend who was researching how to reverse or not get uh, diabetes and she found Dr. Neil Bernard's book and then she did some more research and she found Dr. Um, John McDougall's book, The McDougall Program for Maximum Weight Loss and she bought that book and gave it to me as a gift and you know at first when I read it I just thought what do you mean no animal, no dairy, no oil? I've never heard of a diet like this but I thought I've tried everything else from Weight Watchers to Tops to Atkins to Slender Now, a drink I used to drink and so forth. And we've all been on that journey. So I thought, what have I got to lose? Well, I wanted to make this a test. And I decided that if I went on it just as perfectly as I could, then I could evaluate whether or not this was going to be my answer. So I did. I went on it and I went to my doctor and he said he could continue giving me pain medicine for our upcoming trip. He could give me knee injections for my knees or he said I could refer you to orthopedics for a possible knee replacement. And then I say he dropped the bomb on me, but you'd have to lose 70 pounds before I could even refer you. So. I just dived into that book. It made so much sense to me. It was so different from anything else. And that's what led to my success. And then it was about, I say about nine months later uh, before Ben joined me, but he initially said, oh, I could never eat like you. And I said, okay, that's fine. He did most of the cooking anyway. So I didn't have to cook two meals. He cooked his and I cooked mine and made mine compliant. And over time, Guess what? He came on board. <laughs> I, I, I think for me, as like Esther said, I did, we had been on so many different diets. I was just at the point that no more diets. But, but when I was, you know, over the nine months before I started this, I had heard a lot of information coming into the house on about how, you know, good this was for, the, for your health and good for the planet and good... Uh, for just everything, there wasn't anything bad about it. And, and so I told Esther, when the meat, we had, you know, some meat and stuff in the freezer, I said, I'll tell you what, Esther, when the meat's gone, I'll, I won't buy any more meat. <laughs> and when the dairy and stuff that we had up for the holidays for around Easter was gone, I said, I won't buy any more dairy and stuff. And we cut out the oil. And I don't, I don't like to call this a diet. I like to call this a lifestyle change because when you go on a diet before, for me, anyway, we go on a diet, we lose some weight before you know it, we back eating the way we were before and it wasn't a lifestyle change. So I, I never call this a diet. 
And I can actually say that I never counted calories or anything. When I started eating this way, I was weight, weight around 230. And I, at one time, had been up over 300 pounds, you know, and I had lost down to 230. And I've been going to the gym probably for, I don't know, eight or 10 years. And I could stay around 230, but I couldn't lose any weight, you know, by exercising. So I never even tried to diet. I just started eating, like I said, no meat, no dairy, and no oil. And within about six to eight months, I dropped from 230 to 160. And I've been 160 ever since for, I guess, about three and a half, four years. So it hasn't been a diet for me. It's a lifestyle change. Yeah, yeah it is. That is so <laughs> wonderful. I, I love, especially Ben, I'm really so glad that you're here because we need a man's perspective. It's, it's so many women are, when they hear about this lifestyle, they're right on board and they're ready to go. But for men, it can be a difficult transition because they think that if they don't eat meat, it, that, that somehow they, it, it's equivalent to, to their manlyhood. And, and to see that you have had that success and it has worked so well for you. And it's, I, I know it's going to be so inspiring and help some of these ladies that are trying to get some men on board to, to see that it's something that can be done and you can have success. Yeah. Well, if I can just say that it's not, you can't talk someone into doing this. They have to hear the information and be open to the information because, you know, once you hear the information, it just makes sense. I mean, to me anyway, and it wasn't like Esther said, you got to do this or got to do that. I mean, she just let me eat, eat the way I normally do. And still, we don't eat exactly the same way. I still cook my own meals. I use a lot of the things that she's already prepared and I make it to the way I want to eat it. But I don't use any meat, dairy or oil. <laughs> and it's that simple. Yeah. You know? That's fantastic. Did you want to say something, Esther? You seem like you wanted to oh, say something. Oh, no, I, I think it's important that uh, we note that not every one of us are on the exact same path. But for me, and being a woman, I think it's harder to lose weight. And of course, you know, I didn't start until I was 72, which, you know, is, uh, could be problematic too, but it wasn't. But I think, you know, I eat where I, like, I eat more, you know, just fruits, vegetables, grains, and beans. And Ben is able to eat more bread and pasta and tortillas and things like that. Uh, so we don't compete with one another. You know, he knows what works for his body. And I keep wanting to press to have, you know, no processed food. I'm kind of like, I don't know, the leader of the parade in a way. I just want to be the very healthiest I can be. And so for me, when I eliminate some of those extras that are not allowed on the maximum weight loss program anyway, then I've been able to maintain my weight, you know, for two and a half years now. And that I was telling someone, I think it was just yesterday, you know, peace of mind is just such a gift. And when you're not on that yo-yo dieting, you know, up one day and down the next and up and down and blaming yourself and, and uh, criticizing yourself for not being strong. And, um, you know, as Dr. Lyle points out, it's really not about willpower. We think it is, but it's not. It's about having a clean environment. And if there's nothing in your house that would derail you, you're safe. You That's can, true. You can it's sound it. advice. Yeah. I'm glad that you talked about the different difference in what you both eat. And I think it's really important for the women out there and the men, but to, to understand that typically a man will burn more calories mm -hmm. than a woman just by sitting down and doing nothing you know, a man will be burning more calories than a woman typically. So sometimes their calorie needs are different. And sometimes, many times a man needs more calories. So whereas a woman, you know, we're fat producing baby making machines. So we can just look at an avocado and it goes to our hips sometimes. <laughs> at least it feels that way. <laughs> Where a man can eat it and nothing happens. And that's because they were just burning things differently. So when I feel like when the men are looking to adopt this lifestyle or the women are trying to get their man on board, 
keep this in mind and don't think that the man should be eating the exact same portions and the exact same restrictions as a woman because he'll probably feel like he's starving and think that this lifestyle isn't for him. So I'm, I'm glad that you, you talked about that. And then also today we're going to be talking about traveling. And it's just so important to keep a lot of these things in mind. Now, the two of you, you love to travel. Is that right? I mean, that's a, that's a big part of your life. And, and as you talked about in our introduction, how Esther, you had the, the knee issues and, and you could have had so many other things happening to you health wise in your life. But the thing that made, made this decision easier for you was the fact that you love to travel and you didn't want that to be a barrier. Right. And, but yet people who have adopted this lifestyle, they're concerned that this lifestyle could be a barrier to travel. And mm -hmm. you love travel so much, but yet you still are seeming to ha be able to adopt this lifestyle and, and maintain it. So we're going to talk about that. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off our true or false questions so that people and you guys can be involved. And Jess has voice. Tell us what they have to do. It's time for True or False on Be Green with Amy Live. Answer true or false to Amy's questions in the comments below, and Amy will ask our guest for the expert answer. Okay, here's our first question, and that has to do with our subject today. Traveling while whole food plant-based is extremely difficult and a lot of work. <laughs> okay. So that, that should be an easy question for you guys to guess what the answer is. But I'm going to let Esther and Ben talk about it. You can decide who wants to, who wants to talk about that. So okay. good. good. I, I think it's difficult. I think it's difficult walking outside your door at home. And I told Amy I wanted to kind of mention that, that travel really begins the minute you walk out of your house. Because you might be going to a friend's house and that's going to be issues. You might be going to a restaurant and that has issues. Uh, and eventually you might be getting on a plane or getting on a cruise ship and taking a trip of a lifetime. But every time you leave your house and leave your safe place, you're faced with decisions of how you're going to handle it. You know, you have to deal with how your host who has invited you to dinner is going to handle it. Do you have the courage to say to your host or hostess, you know what? I have special dietary restrictions and I would love to come have dinner with you, but this is how I eat. Can I help you out by bringing something to share? Or, you know, what did you plan to serve and how can I work around that? So communication is really important. And when you're going out to a restaurant like we did yesterday, you know, it's really helpful to go on the internet and look at their menu online and see what, if anything, is available. Because once you get to the restaurant and you start looking through page after page after page of animal products and dairy and fried foods, you know, you're going to feel like there's nothing there for you. And in a panic, you might give in. But if you look at the menu ahead of time, like yesterday, I knew the Spaghetti Factory had a side order of um, broccoli. So I chose that because I didn't want the spaghetti sauce. It was without meat, they had one option, but they did have oil in it. So I thought, you know, I'm just, you know, I can do this. So I ordered uh, broccoli. Then they delivered it with this wonderful, delicious mazith with cheese all over the top that I used to love. And <laughs> so I said, oh no, I said, this isn't vegan, I'm sorry. But you know, the, the stronger, you don't need to be aggressive, but you do need to be assertive and take care yeah. of yourself because nobody else will. And so I told the waitress, oh, this isn't big. And, I, you know, and she very politely took it away and brought me a fresh plate. And then eventually, when you get to world travel, we've done most of our traveling with a travel agent. We've gone on groups. We haven't been of a mindset to go to a country and find our own hotels and find our own activities to do. So that helps a lot, I think, because now on planes, you call ahead of time when you make your re reservation. And now they pretty much ask you if you have any dietary needs. And if you say you're vegan, you actually end up getting served a better meal on the plane than those who do not choose that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those passengers can have meal envy. <laughs> yes, yes, we've had that hey, I didn't know I could have that. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> and, and you know, if you're a whole food plant based eater like I am, you still might have to modify it once you get it a little bit. But basically, you've eliminated the dairy and the meat, so that really helps. And then when it comes to when we've traveled with our uh, agent and gone on, I think we've been to like 42 countries. It's just been a wonderful. 84. Oh, 84. 84. I'm <laughs> glad Ben's there to keep you yeah. on track, Esther. <laughs> you can always back check, check me. Uh, yes, anyway, we tell the travel agent. So then he in turn always checks with the airlines, checks with the um, ship, and also checks with the tour guides. So there are times when the, your food may be limited, like when we were in, just two years ago was our last trip to India, Nepal, and Bhutan. And we discovered after the fact that they put a lot of ghee in their food, which is clarified butter. So our guide was so nice. He would go around, like usually there'd be buffets, and he'd say, okay, you can eat this and this and this and not oh. this. Leave this alone, leave this alone. And so they worked hand in glove with us. And then I want to brag, we did a lot of cruises on uh, Holland America, and they have a special menu that a lot of people don't even know about. And I suggested to them, why don't you put this on your regular menu that people can seek a separate menu to meet their needs? So they had one for gluten-free, one for vegetarian, and one for vegan. And the trick was you had to order the night before. And then the following night, then they would have your order and they would bring the food. And so it meant eating in the dining room and getting comfortable with your server. And that worked out good. But even on the buffet lines, they always had uh, oatmeal. And I often could ask for steel cut oatmeal. And they had, um, they had the plant-based milks. And for lunch, they had a huge salad bar of wonderful fresh vegetables. And you could get a balsamic vinegar for a dressing and have a piece of fruit. And then dinner, like I say eating off the vegan menu gave you a lot of varieties and we had i had dessert every single night every single night of course it was usually raspberries strawberries or papaya or mango but that was my dessert so. yeah did you have a specific trip then that you enjoyed where you had the food that you you could eat and you were happy about it well i can't say a specific one but i, I you know uh like esther said they really, you know, bent over backwards to help us. I mean, we've, we've been on a number of land tours recently, and all of the guides would fix it so that we could, you know, get the kind of food we needed to eat. So it was really, it, it's been easier than, it's not, it's not easy, but you just have to be able to tell them what you can and you can't eat, you know, and oil is the hardest thing. Most of them understand no dairy and and no meat. But the problem is, is a, a lot of times they use oil in a lot of things. And, and even the guides sometimes don't know. And, and if they bring it out and you look at it and it looks like it's swimming in oil, don't eat it. Yeah. Right. Oh, you know? how the people don't think about that not eating is also an option. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'll say the other thing is like we just did a trip to Texas and and flying down, we decided we you know would need something to eat on the way down and Esther made up some uh, uh, sweet potatoes and stuff. And I made up some, a couple of things in a tortilla and that was lunch on the plane, you know, and it was, it was good. And, yeah. and then when we were in a motel down there, we went to a, a grocery store, went to the produce department and we got more potatoes and got more fruit and had things so that we could just eat, you know, in the motel before we met with our family. And that way, you know, if you make sure you're full before you get into compromising situations, it really helps. You know? I like that. Make sure you're full before you get into compromising situations. That's, that is beautiful. That's just something to take for people to, I asked our audience to write down, to type in the pearls of wisdom that they hear. And if I was in the audience, that's what I'd be typing in the comments right now so that people could see it because I, I love it. You know, it it would be easy to get derailed from this lifestyle while you're traveling or eating at a restaurant. You know, we, you, we can give ourselves permission to fail when we travel and, and we can find reasons to fail instead of reasons to succeed. So it's having these tips from you guys, it's so helpful because you've been to all these countries and you've done all of this traveling and you haven't let having this lifestyle, being on this lifestyle ch change the fact that you're traveling and you haven't let it keep you 
from enjoying yourselves because you're not looking to the food so much as the enjoyment, but the experiences, right? Because that's really what is the it matters. Yeah. It was like yesterday. I was so excited, Amy, because uh, we were at this dinner. There must have been 20, 25 people there, and they all ordered, you know, their regular food. And at first I felt a little odd, you know, ordering the broccoli. But you know what? They're not going to remember that today. But yeah. what they're going to remember is that we had good conversation. And I was able to talk to a man there that has diabetes, and he was ready to hear. And after he left the luncheon, he went home and actually listened to Neil Bernard on a podcast talk about uh -oh. reversing diabetes. It doesn't get any better than that. No, it doesn't. See? And that, that was better than anything that you could have previously had in wow. your old lifestyle. Absolutely. That's really wonderful. So, so we were talking about the, the airplanes, right? So some people, have you ever flown internationally well, they, oh, while sure. we're on this lifestyle? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay, well, so because people worry about... Can, that, go ahead, if Dan. You call, ahead. If you call in advance, you'll get vegan meals. You mm -hmm. know, but you, you have to make sure you call in advance to, to set it For up. the airline. For right. the airlines. Uh huh. So yeah. you, I mean, as far as people, some people want to bring some of their food with them, either to pack it and have it in the luggage, or bring a carry on. And when you're flying, especially internationally, the TSA can have some restrictions. I mean, my daughter just recently traveled, and she took a picture of the TSA taking away some of her food. <laughs> And sent it to me because she didn't know that the particular country that she was going to had mm -hmm. some restrictions. Because I, I think mostly it's the fresh, fresh fruit and fresh vegetables that they're concerned about that you could bring in some eggs for other insects that could be a, a bad thing for their country. So, did you ever bring any food on? I mean, you talked a little bit about it. Do you have any? You want to talk a little bit more about food that you bring on an airplane, especially internationally? I've had no problem. I've had to eat the food before I arrived in the other country. Ah. But I had no problem taking food on this end and okay. on a plane. And I've had, you know, carrots hanging out of my pocket and potatoes in my purse. And, <laughs> you know, you, you can't bring liquids, you right. know. But, but in terms of on the plane, no. And, of course, by the time you get to an international destination, that's going to be many hours. Like we flew to China and India. That's a long trip. Um, but, but on those long trips, you get food too. So, yeah. it, you know, you can get through it, but you know, you can pack things like nuts and raisins if you're not limiting yourself on that. Um, and you can take dry right. oatmeal and just ask for hot water and, and add that to your cup, you know? So, uh, there's just lots of little tips, but don't be afraid to take it. Even if they take it away, it's better to gamble that you're going to be able to keep it with you. And right. And then, like I say, we when we came back from was it China one time, I had eaten, I had to eat an apple real quick on the plane before we got back. And the dog was there at the airport and he sniffed me out. <laughs> <laughs> but the apple was gone. So. But the apple was gone. So we didn't get yeah. <laughs> I don't like to waste food. No. I wouldn't blame you. Yeah. And I and I think like like a potato, you know. I yeah. mean, you, you could if you I think if you cooked it, it'd probably be OK if uh -huh. you, you know, you could bake it. And then because they're delicious cold, even, I think. In fact, on that trip to Texas, I actually did eat a raw sweet potato. You know how hard they are? Yes. But it was an interesting experience. <laughs> it well, it makes it last funny. longer, too. That's, you know what? The longer it lasts, the less time you have to wear your mask. <laughs> because you're eating. Hey, I'm eating, okay? That's right. <laughs> Leave me alone. Because <laughs> I had one, one airline steward, he actually woke me up to tell me that my mask had come down below my nose. Oh, yeah. And then, and then three minutes later, I'm eating, you know. So you have to deal with the rules and regulations as best yeah. you can. So it could be an advantage to take a potato with you. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So and it's better to eat slower anyway. Yes. It's better that we masticate our food. It's better that we take our time and realize what we're eating and where it came from and all the nutrients that are in it and how it's our medicine. Exactly. Speaking of that, I have to show you my shirt. Let's see okay, let's see. Everybody take a look at Esther's shirt. 
Okay, okay so I have to move toward I... Ben. Oh, it's, says, the food. it's the food. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yep, it's that's the all. Best one there is, you know. It it surely is. I'm telling you. Now I've oh. also go ahead. Oh, Amy, I I wanted to say that it was my knees that brought me to my knees, but um, it wasn't only that. See, I yeah. just. Think I was sick. I had high blood pressure. I've taken statins. I was taking levothyroxine 30 years for my thyroid. I was on, I had GERD and diverticulitis and I had constipation and I had high blood pressure and I was pre-diabetic and, and more. But, yeah. but you weren't of, sick. You were just normal like everybody that's else. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It was just, so it wasn't any, the only thing that bothered me is if my travel was going to be stopped, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I'm so glad that I, I'm so, if we listen to our bodies, it tells us so much, but we're so quick to cover it up with pain medicine or, you know, run to the doctor and get another pill, you know, but we can listen to our bodies because our bodies want to be well. That's the natural state is wellness. Yes, it surely is. And, and you're showing all of us that, that it is a natural state and it can be so, so much more benefits to that. So we, I, I thought I saw a question. So we, um, we were talking about the airlines. Now, do you, some people like if they bring things on the plane that are frozen, hmm. right? And they use them as ice packs for, for other things. And so that this way, so like they could take, maybe make a smoothie or have a chili or a soup, and then they would freeze it and put it maybe in a Ziploc bag or something, and then put that in a in some kind of a cold container, cooler, and then put other food in there that wasn't frozen, and those are their ice packs. Ah. You know, and then when they That's arrive... The liquid part of that. be frozen. But still, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I yeah. well, I've, I've heard people that have said that it works for them, that as long okay, as the good. liquid is frozen, that, that it's not a problem. And then they bring other things with them that, that they want to keep cool, but they don't, now they don't need an ice pack. And then when they arrive, they have that soup that was frozen and now they can thaw it out. So that's true. Now, do you, did you guys say that you had an RV or something or you just no, basically, no. Do, okay. So now when you do, you do the, the cruising, do you ever take any food with you on the cruise? No. No, they have yeah. everything. They have everything you need, so you oh, don't really. Oh yes, oh yes, it's just wonderful. the The issue with cruising is, I would suggest getting some of this lifestyle under your belt before you go, because the temptations are so great there. You know, with all the ice cream and all the dessert bars and all the yeah. special things they have, that it would be difficult to start eating this way on a cruise. But if once you're committed and you know what you can eat then it's, it's really so much easier than a restaurant. So much easier because you always have the uh, vegetable, you know, the salad bar, and you always have, you know, the oatmeal. They have dried cereal too, but I prefer the oatmeal. And they have lots of fresh fruit. So you, there's an abundance of, of a compliant food there. And in the meal at nighttime, I would always get a sweet potato and, and get, uh, they even had uh, vegan salads and soups and so forth. And uh, I would get my sweet potato would be like like the leg of a turkey. I would be huge. Oh, wonderful! You know? And then lots of vegetables and soup and salad. And you know, if you eat bread, they would have bread if you wanted that. And, and then, like say, fresh fruit for dessert. And then they have things you can snack in between time if you want to. They have they have a vegan menu that every night. every night, like Esther said before, you just order the night before. So you could just get everything off that or and Esther would order some of the things like that and then she would always get a big a baked potato or a or a baked uh, sweet, potato. sweet potato yeah, yeah. that's so fabulous yeah. wow so when you're do you ever uh travel when you and, and stay in a hotel right you've done that too right yeah. not just the cruising right so yeah. Now, if you're just if you're in a hotel, do you ever go out to get your own food? I mean, how do you do you ever have to navigate that if you decide that maybe you didn't want to eat in a restaurant for one time or? Yeah, we we were going to be a family for a memorial service in in October when we went to Texas. So yes, when 
when we got there, we got our car rental and we went and found a grocery store and we loaded up on produce from the grocery store. And that's where I got my sweet potatoes and we got grapes and bananas and, and cereal and, and uh, plant milk. And we just kind of put that all in the refrigerator in our hotel. And so we would eat, eat there. And then uh, we only had to eat out maybe two or three times. And then we were at my son's in-law's house and my daughter-in-law is big, and so she always made sure that she had plenty of beans and rice for us too, and had the other food. But you know, you just have to zero in on what's your what's your food, you know, what's your plan. And right. uh, so yeah, so that trip worked out really well. And if I were traveling uh, in a car, like we'd love to take a car trip and go someplace, I would definitely take my instant pot with me because I could just go to the grocery store and load up and cook a lot of potatoes and have those ready to go and vegetables or whatever else we wanted to make. So. Right. And they even have these little uh, car, car charging things that you can put in your cigarette lighter and it's a converter where you can actually plug in and it makes it into an, an electrical outlet. Mm -hmm. So that if you wanted to just keep your instant pot in the back and cook, you could be driving while it's plugged in. To, to a converter. <laughs> and, and when we've been on the road before, like we could stop at Subway and they always would have the ingredients that they would put in a sandwich and I would just have the salad. And then they didn't have any no fat dressing, but I had them mix, they had regular vinegar and they had mustard. So I had them mix the two and I'd use that for a dressing. And then we used to go sometimes to Wendy's, you could get a baked potato there and get a side order of salsa. And some restaurants, um, Mexican restaurants are good as far as beans and rice. You have to be a little careful with that. But the best thing is the produce department. In fact, when I told my doctor that we were switching how we were eating, he said, oh, he said, well, if I told people to eat that way. He said that they would say that's not real food. And I thought, what? And then he, said, <laughs> and then he had the nerve to say, Oh, and besides, there are no health food stores in our area, like we live in the ghetto or something. Oh, yeah. And I said, and I usually don't speak out, but I'm getting better about it. <laughs> Maybe I'll warn you <laughs> that way. But anyway, I just said to him, all you need is the produce department of any store. Right. And I wanted to go back and see him and take him a copy of my book. I'm just, strutting. yeah. I'd like to just strut. <laughs> <laughs> You have you have to take your your phone with you so you can record it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I, I, I want to interview you. Yeah. I did get to switch to a plant based doctor, and and uh, now I don't have to go see him. You know, but still, he's in, in he's there if I need him. So sure. Yeah. So when you're in a hotel room, one thing that I found that was nice. So sometimes you don't always get to to get a hotel room that has a kitchen. Sometimes they don't have a refrigerator. Sometimes they don't even have a microwave. So what I've done is I've got, I had usually they all have a coffee maker, and coffee makers boil water because you if you wanted to have tea you just put the water in the coffee maker. Now you have boiling water, and so I have used that in the past to make oatmeal. Yeah. So that's that's something that I wanted to pass on as a tip to everyone that if you didn't have have those things that are, you probably have a coffee maker and you could probably do that. And I like to batch cook potatoes and bring them with me. And then if I I can hopefully have the refrigerator. But sometimes the hotels, if you ask them and you don't have a refrigerator in your room, they'll either bring one to your room or they will hold the food in the refrigerator in you know in their back office for you. So I've had, I've had that experience. And one of the things that I like to travel with, and I like the instant pot, I do have a three quart instant pot. So it's, and you could see it in the background, it's the little baby. <laughs> and I like to, I like to travel with that, you know, if I want to take it along on an airplane with me. And now I'm going to show you, I also like my uh, Nutribullet. That's another thing that I like to take with me because I like to blend a lot of my sauces and, and, and dressings. And so this is just a, a really great thing. It's like having a high powered blender, but it, if you like to have Vitamix, it's, that can be pretty cumbersome to travel with. Yeah. And then the other thing I like is this uh, mini chopper. Some people have the version that you just pull a string and it blends things, but this one actually plugs in 
and you just push down on the on the uh, power on the button, and it'll either pulse or it'll. You can just keep holding it down, and it'll chop things up. And that's what, one of the things that I like to take. And it's just so easy; you just take it apart. And it's and my husband, whenever he packs, he never lets anything be empty. So shoes or this, you know, like in here, he might put in some spices and things, <laughs> so to take up this, you know, so it doesn't take up extra space. So I just wanted to share a couple of the things that that I like to do as far as when I'm traveling. And now when you're driving, you can also, have you ever like made a pit stop at a, a gas station? Some of these places sometimes have, have things that you could make use of. Somebody that I was listening to was talking about how that they have uh, microwaves, a lot of them, because they sell the food that's not good for you. So what they do is they'll buy like a cup of tea or some gas so that they're a customer. And then they might take something that they had with them to, and maybe use that their microwave to heat, heat their food up in there. That's you know? a good tip, yeah. yeah. And on the airlines too, if you have your instant oatmeal in a little cup, you can always get hot water from the stewardess, you know, to make your instant oatmeal on the, on the plane. You see, that's another great tip. Very nice. I like that. And, and dried fruit is it will get you through too. You know, if you, you know, I don't like to eat a lot of it or not very much, but you know, it will. If you're just gonna think you're gonna die, you can always have a couple of dates or or uh, some dried fruit that works out well too. It just it can be so simple. We're so used to thinking we have to have everything we have at home or have to have so much and. You know, you can live on potatoes alone. So anything else you add to your diet is just going to be a plus. And sometimes right. I'll pretend I'm in jail, and I would think, well, if I was in, if I was in jail, maybe I'd only be getting a piece of bread today or maybe some water. You know, and then oh, now I get to have an orange, and now I get to have a potato, <laughs> and you know, and so it's so much better than what life could be. You know, for some people, it's it's a mind game. Yeah, it is. And it, and, and it gives, you, gives you other things to think about. Now, I wanted to tell everybody that you do have a book that you wrote, and it's called From Donuts to Potatoes. And it has wonderful uh, word of the day. It's kind of like a, a calendar in there and it has different for every day of the year. There's a, a word. And the last time that Esther was on, I asked her to read something one of the words, and she picked the day of the broadcast. But today, there was one word that I thought that might be appropriate, and it was to, for the word for today is up, and it was on uh, page twenty-eight. Do you want to read that to us oh. so that people can get an idea about your book? Oh, sure. Thank you. The word for today on January twenty. That was January twenty-fifth. That's not right. Oh, that's just because you wanted that. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. I'm so used okay. to having to be the because I read every day in my journey and I anyway so that's right. what I was thinking. Yeah, this was for January 25th and the word for the day was up. We can be up and we can be down, and being only halfway up is neither up or down. I think that idea can apply can be applied to how well we stay on whatever eating plan we have chosen. The most uncomfortable place to be must be when we fall off the wagon and are in that between place of not being in control and not enjoying our indulgences either. Peace can come when we make a decision to be our best. And even when there are moments that we fall short of our goal, we nevertheless make the most of the situation and get right back up on the program. When we stray, we don't have to stay in no man's land for an indefinite period of time. We can choose to make that digression as short-lived as possible and learn what we can about what in our environment has seduced us. Keeping a clean environment is the best predictor of success. When in doubt, throw it out is a good rule to follow while eating a plant-based diet because if we keep it around, it will eventually end up in our mouths. My friend says, when we know better, we do better. Give yourself a break from any past criticism 
and pat yourself on your back for each wise decision you make. You make hundreds of decisions a day. Be true to what works for you. And when you learn new techniques, face up to it and make adjustments. Rise up and enjoy your day. <laughs> yeah, I know it wasn't it wasn't on the calendar date of today's broadcast, but I just I love your book and I've been reading the different path. It's just so motivating because sometimes you feel like you're in it all alone and you have a Facebook group and you and every day you read for the word of the day, you actually broadcast from reading from your book. So if somebody couldn't buy your book, they could just listen to all of your broadcasts and they could have somebody read the book to them. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because um, I had been posting a post every day in Esther's Nutritional Journey for a whole year of 2019. And then some of the people in my group said, Esther, you should write a book. And I said, why should I write a book? And then you have to pay money and buy it when I give you a page every day free. That's right. <laughs> and so anyway, but they wanted a book. So my dedication is to them, all my people in my group. They're wonderful. Yeah, that's wonderful. Oh, and Carol says, on a recent road trip, I found Taco Bell, sides of black beans plus rice, very low fat and tasted good, saved me when I was unprepared. So, you know, like you said, Wendy's, that was a good idea, Carol, but, you know, I guess it's just, it, we, they don't they don't like to tell you what the ingredients are, so we got to really be kind of careful as far, because they, there's a lot of things that they have in there. I, rem I remember when I first adopted this lifestyle and I, I wasn't, I wasn't getting rid of the flour as much. So I went to uh, a restaurant, called, it's a chain, it's called Cracker Barrel, and I would eat all the great sides that they had and the salads and so forth. So I really was on track and I brought my own dressing, but I would have one corn muffin because I would say, well, you know, I'll just have this tiny corn muffin. But that was in the beginning when I was having the voices in my head telling me <laughs> that it's okay to have this just a little or it won't hurt. And then the waitress told me that when they, in the batter, they put bacon grease. Oh, <laughs> So it was good that she said that yeah. <laughs> because then I never had them anymore. <laughs> but you just don't know. One time I went to eat and, and I ordered a veggie burger and I thought, wow, great veggie burger, right? That's okay. I took the bun off and I asked them for extra, you know, lettuce and tomatoes and things. And I was eating it with my fork and it was this, this stretchy gooey stuff that was in there. And, and I, and I said, what is this? You know, and I'm tasting it. I'm like, this is weird. And then I asked them, what's in your veggie burger? Oh, cheese. Oh, wow. wow. Right? Why? Because it's, it's a veggie burger. It's made with veggies, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have dairy in it. Right. So it's just, you really have to, if you really want to stay on track, you need to, you need to ask the questions and not be afraid to ask them. And even sometimes, especially the fast food restaurants, if you can go on the internet, you can see their menus and you can see the ingredients if you really mm -hmm. do your homework <laughs> yeah. yes i'll be curious to find out if people in your audience thought eating out or taking you know was was difficult yeah we should we should you, you posed at the beginning yeah we'll have to we'll have to look at the at the answers yeah so um so let's see we have we do have some questions so okay Anita373 says, what is your favorite restaurant which you ate a whole food plant-based meal? I'm sorry, what was that again? Our favorite restaurant for a whole food plant-based meal. Well, here in Sacramento, I would say BJ's. It's a nationwide chain, and I don't know that they have these options everywhere, but the manager just happens to be vegan, and his wife works for Kaiser as a nurse, and he had, before COVID, he had a menu with five items on it that were whole food plant-based and usually i he had a stuffed potato which was great and had a soup and he also had uh, a quinoa um, bowl that was very delicious so i i really like that and do you uh, have do you have yeah. a favorite then well you know i i'm, I'm kind of spoiled to be honest with you i i 
I would rather eat at home than I would to go out. I just, because I, I, I know what I'm, I, I, I know what I'm eating at home, and when I go out, I don't know what I'm eating a lot of the time, and it just is so much easier. And I look, I look forward to the meals that I prepare for myself. So I, I in in the past, when before we were doing this whole food plant based, it was a big deal to go out and have a big scrumptious meal or something. But it doesn't seem to be that well. For every week on Wednesday, we go to a, a restaurant up and meet with a group of other people that are vegan like we are and it's called the vegan plate and it's good but i'd rather eat at home i hate to say that i i, I just would rather eat at home now oh. well that i i feel the same way you know i i do and sometimes i feel that i have to order a lot of different sides in order to to feel full right and, and you don't I, you don't feel satisfied afterwards it's not right. like it's not what I would normally do, but you know, so it's yeah. just, it's just, if you want to have conversation with other people, you have to make adjustments to your own lifestyle, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, it's still good that you can socialize and do things. We had uh, Sandra Goodson McClanahan and you can guys can look and see that uh, video that we have on YouTube, but she, told us that she sometimes has to go to restaurants and what she'll do is she'll order food like a salad, a big salad, but she'll have in her purse, she'll have maybe a potato or maybe a bag of cooked beans and just idea. a few different things. And then, she, and, and also a small bottle of her favorite dressing and she'll take those things out of her purse and she feels, well, I'm a paying customer. I'm buying something. So it's not that I'm sitting here and not buying anything. So she doesn't feel bad about, you know, taking a potato or whatever it is and adding it to her salad. And, and then it makes it more satisfying. Yeah. I think that's totally admirable you know because it's a restaurant they're really disease machines yeah you know they're really hindering us and it's uh almost impossible to find much there so i, I definitely agree with that take take a potato with you or beans or whatever you need to take and 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 if you're embarrassed about taking it into the restaurant eat it in the car before you go in now that's a good strategy too. Absolutely. I like that. And let's see if we have any more questions. Okay. Oh, oh let's see. Uh, Jenny says, have you ever visited any theme parks? Some don't allow you to take food. Hmm. I don't think we have since we've been doing this. Oh, probably not. Yeah. No. Most of our grandchildren are adults now, so we Really, it's been a, for a while to a yeah. theme park. And, you know. no, I, I can't remember. Yeah. That's probably yeah. Well, I like the idea about what you said as far as the car, you know, how mm -hmm. you can have food in, in the car and eat there. And yeah. I think that some of them are, are becoming a little more friendly. And I think some of them, if you tell them that you have dietary restrictions, that they may be, you might be able to, like you said, Esther, call ahead of time. And, yeah. and get through all those things and find out what they can do for you. Yeah. So, I think in terms of in terms of spreading the news about the benefits of going vegan or whole food plant based, I think it's really a good strategy too when you go to a restaurant, even if you know what you're going to order already, is to say to the waiter, you know, I'm vegan and I'm restricted on what I can eat. What would you suggest? And it kind of puts them on the spot, but it also educates them. And see, it was, um, I guess it was last Thursday, we went to a restaurant and it was a, a local restaurant. And so much of what was on the menu was all, you know, the meat and cheese and everything. And so I said to the waiter, I said, I'm vegan. Uh, so what do you have? What would you suggest? And he said, well, my girlfriend's vegan. So he wow. said, he said, you can get this salad and we'll just hold the salami. And then I said, instead of having uh, dressing, I said, just plain balsamic vinegar for dressing. And it was a beautiful salad. It had pinto beans, it had garbanzo beans, it had grated carrots, it had cucumbers, it had uh, red peppers. And um, it was just a beautiful salad. I put it on my 
in my group and people were going to go home and make it themselves that evening because it was just so so pretty so oh, i want to go back there in a heartbeat but but it helps to spread the news it helps to to let the waiters and the wait staff know that there are people like us out there that are looking for compliant food and um you know see what they can do that's great i i also wanted to talk about that i think having a plan for when you come home you know you think about going on the trip and you packed and you did all that planning ahead of time which is great so that you could not have to make too many decisions and you would know that you would have the the compliant food available but sometimes you come home from a trip and and maybe you're have some jet lag because you flew internationally or you're just tired because you made a lot of connections or whatever it is and that could be a weak moment for you to say well i've been gone so long there's really not much in the kitchen so i'll order whatever you know delivery just for today and that could be a really slippery slope so i think having a plan in place for when you get home could probably be a good idea what do you think well yesterday? i think i think it's great in fact when we came home and i had so much energy we got home like two in the morning or something and ben was out doing the laundry and i started cooking right away because potatoes last while we were gone so we always could do that but what i did is i had put a lot of vegetables that were fresh in the freezer before we left. So I just made a big pot of uh, what I call dump soup, you know, and just started with a can of diced tomatoes and add, I made add some tomato paste to it. And then just started emptying the freezer, of freshly frozen vegetables to it, make a big pot of soup. So that just takes maybe a half hour. So, and you can eat that all day. And there's always oatmeal and make another batch of oatmeal and start your batch cooking all over again. Right. I think that's great. Having having things in the freezer mm -hmm. is great. One of the things I like to do is I, I wanted to show you guys these things are called super cubes and they're they're silicone and they're like big ice cube trays. And so I will make my chili, my soups and, and stews and things, and I'll they're two cup portions here, and I'll put them in here and then I put them in the freezer. So when I come home, you know, I use them all the time, but it, I think in that they could be good for travel because when you, you could take it out of the freezer and then you, you pop it in, inside out like that and then you put it in a soup bowl or a coffee mug and then, a, you know, a couple minutes later it's defrosted and now you have it. So to have the food prepared ahead of time in the freezer so that and the frozen fruits and vegetables too so that when you come home, if you didn't have time or didn't, you know, or it wasn't a you didn't feel like shopping or whatever that there's something waiting for you so that you don't get derailed and go off track again that's a good idea that's, i like that that's good yeah what i do sometimes when in the summertime we get an abundance of fruit at the farmer's market and we get buy more than we can use and so i just put it in the vitamix and blend it up and i don't have that fancy uh container you have but i just use some tall glasses they have and just pour the pour the pureed fruit into the glass and freeze it and then later it's like eating an icy uh-huh so you put it in a glass like yeah. a, like a, a drinking glass or what uh-huh yeah uh-huh i can show you it's just okay yeah sure that sounds really cool because i always worry about freezing i have some glass containers that i use to freeze in but I never, I sometimes I don't, I never try to freeze in an actual glass. So that could be fun. <laughs> so it's freezing in an actual uh, drinking glass. So let's yeah. see what it is. Did you, okay. Yes, yeah, so I, I should get what you have because then I wouldn't be using up all my drinking glasses. <laughs> like oh, glass. look this at that. Probably, yeah, it's just a regular old drinking glass. Uh huh. And so you don't fill it all the way up to the top, no. though, right? Uh huh. Uh -huh. And, and what, what's in, what's in it? Uh, this was probably peaches, and I think this might have been plums or something. I don't recall, but it doesn't matter. I just I didn't want them to go bad. So yeah. I, the blender pureed them, poured them in there, and frozen. And then we have a pomegranate tree, so I always have fun getting my pomegranate seeds out and putting them in a little freezer rice. And you know what? They don't get frozen hard. Look, they're still they're still soft. Yeah. So you can take out as many as you want and put them over cereal or just eat them, and you know. So it's just fun to play with food. And the one thing good about eating the frozen uh, fruit is that, you know, people like to snack when they're watching TV. Well, if I take one of these glasses of fruit 
and I get a spoon, it takes almost a whole program or whole movie to eat it because I have to just scrape it with a spoon. And so it lasts longer, you know, yeah. whereas ready-made food, you can just overeat, you know. So yeah. I, I like to take time eating. I think it's important. and it gives your brain a chance to realize that you're satisfied. Yeah, oh. so those are just some fun things. Yeah. Now, I also want, I know we're talking about travel, but since we have Ben here, because we didn't have him and on our previous broadcast, I wanted to ask Ben to talk about his, uh, his donut shop and how, how you guys met. I want to hear Ben's, you, you talked about it, but I want to hear it from Ben. Well, it's, Esther, Esther's father gave her a, a coupon to my donut shop. I used to run ads, you know, like in uh, the paper or something. It was buy six, get six free. So her dad gave her a, a coupon to my donut shop, and she came in, and she bought some donuts, and she says she really liked them. And, of course, <laughs> this is before you guys adopted this lifestyle. We have to tell yeah. you guys, oh, okay? Wait, wait. This wasn't yesterday. No, this was like... Uh, <laughs> 30 years, 34 years ago. Okay, go ahead. Anyway, and so she started coming back. And in, in the donut business, everybody eats the same donut every day. So she would come in and she, her thing was she liked buttermilk bars. And so I would always have, when I would see her pull up, I would just put a, a buttermilk bar in a bag and she would run in and get it and she would go out. Well, I kind of liked the way she looked, you know, I thought, <laughs> I, you know, I'm single and I thought, well, uh, one day I had a card and I wrote on the back of my business card. I said, I'd like to get to know you and could we have lunch sometime? And I put my phone number on there. Well, I didn't hear anything, you know, and I thought, well, I thought that that's not a good way to meet people, I guess. And so a couple of weeks later, she came back. I, I should let her take over here because she... She, she can tell you why she didn't come back in. But anyway, she says she was embarrassed and, and, and she felt, you know, didn't know what, didn't even remember what I looked like, you know. <laughs> so anyway, so she came back in. I, she said, I, she says, you're losing a good customer and I'm losing a good donut every day. So she came back in. So this time, <laughs> this time I went out back when she left and I went up to her car and, and talked to her and told her you know we'd i'd like to get to know you could we have a date and uh, anyway we, we uh -huh. set up a time and we had uh uh dinner i think the following saturday and as she'll tell you we i've seen her every day for what 34 30, 30, 34 30. years now. yeah yeah so anyway after a while she would come and help me make deliveries on her way to work she'd come in early and stuff so so we've seen each other every day for 34 years. And that's how we met. Oh, that's, that is so beautiful. Listening to you tell the story and then looking at Esther's face. <laughs> and, 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 you know, do your cheeks hurt, Esther? Because my, yeah. my, my, I'm smiling so much, my cheeks hurt. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's so beautiful. So, uh, so you saw this business card inside of your donut bag, and then what, what was in your mind? Well, I got to the parking lot, and I ate the donut and drank the coffee on the way to work, and his card was blue, so in the white bag, so it kind of caught my eye. I thought, what in the world's in here? So I pulled it out, and it said, Hi, my name is Ben. I'd like to get to know you. And I thought, oh, dear. You know, and I was in my 30s, I guess. And I can't remember how old I was. But anyway, I felt like I was 16 again. <laughs> and and I just didn't know what to do. And so anyway, um, so as Ben said, I didn't, um, I didn't call. He said, asked me to call him. I thought, well, I'm not going to call him. I just didn't want to chase him down, you know. So, but then after a few days, I thought, well, you know, he's missing a customer and I'll just go back and pretend like, like I never got it. But then <laughs> I, when he met me at the car outside, um, he said, did you get my note? And I said, yeah. <laughs> you know, so then we kind of carried on from then. But, um, and then it was so fun because he took me out for dinner. We had a lovely dinner and it's like, we couldn't think of enough places where I mean, we every place we wanted to take each other, you know, to show where we, things we liked and to do. And, 
it just has been a wonderful life for me. I'm very, very happy. He loved me for who I am. He liked my brain. He wasn't like some guys that liked your big boobs or something, you know. <laughs> and, anyway. Well, I, if we asked him, I think that could have been something too. But. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But you had, you had, you were the whole package. Yeah, yeah. When she talk, starts talking like this, I usually say, "That's where I'll meet you in the car." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny, but you know, it was just, it was right around this time of the year too. Our our first date was December fourth, and and uh, it just continued. And we waited. Uh, in my book, I say we waited uh, thirty two months to get married. And I so when I sell a book now, I have to check uh, you know back check that it was only 20 months later we got married uh but yeah I, I actually I, I read that part in here and you do you actually do that you hand write it yes I do. you edit I, it <laughs> because i wanted to be right you know and yeah that's one, that's one of the mistake on page 199 where i say let's see what does it say here that's that i met my goals within um that's oh, right here uh oh it said one year on the text it says two year later Seven nine seventeen. I got there. I got to my goals, but it was yeah. really only one year later. So I yeah. made that correction on page one ninety nine as well. And speaking of the book, I don't make any money off of it. All my royalties go to Doctor McDougall, and I'm just so tickled. He to saved to his foundation. He saved my life, and that's just what I do with that. And but sometimes people want an autographed copy of my book, and I I sold the last one last uh, Wednesday. And so I have put in and I decided, okay, I'll order some more. So if anybody wants a signed book, fine, uh, you can write to me. Um, but if you just want to order one there on Amazon, and then, as I mentioned, all the royalties from the Amazon or other sales go to the McDougal Foundation. So I'm really pleased about that. Well, that's wonderful. We'll put a link in so everybody can see if they want to get the book. I love it. It's just, it's so inspirational and you have uh you, you just, you could, any day that you're feeling, oh, I, I'm having challenges because maybe a family member isn't on board or, or I couldn't, you know, I had something calling to me and, and just reading the, you know, you, you can pick out the, today and you can read today, or you could just do a roulette thing and just pop open yeah. something and see what happens. Or you can go to your birthday, which is what you like to do is, yeah. is find people's birthdays and that's what you did with me in the other broadcast and it's just it's it's just a refreshing nice thing to to see and it helps you to get grounded i think i think it's so great and i'm just so glad that you guys came do you want to say i'm going to give you each a chance esther you could go first but i'll give you each a chance to say something to people out there to help them if they're thinking about adopting this lifestyle or or they're already on board but they really need to tighten the screws and and really be be more uh strict with it and and get better results or if you want to talk about the travel just something that you want to say to people as we're ending so esther you want to go first oh, sure i think what i really want to stress is that we have to love ourselves right where we are i don't care if you have 200 or 300 pounds to lose Get in touch with that little spark of divinity that's in all of us and love yourself and know that you can grow into being all you want to be. The sky is not the limit. I mean, we can do anything we choose to do and we want to do. And years, year, in fact, over 50 years ago, I had a nurse tell me, you know what, Esther? Your happiness is dependent upon your ability to change someone else. Our happiness has to lie within us and we can change ourselves. And then if others are inspired, they can follow, but don't make your happiness uh, dependent on your mate following you or your family following you because that's their journey. And they may see the light that you share. They may see the success you've had and they may come around, but timing is important and you have to trust that we're all on our own path and we can't, be the governor of somebody else so take care of yourself love yourself give yourself the best food that you have available for yourself and know that the weight loss will occur you will take care of the, the medical things first of all and have health and have energy and have vitality 
and then the weight will just be a nice byproduct. Uh, it's a great side effect to eating this way. How about you, Ben? What do you want to say? <laughs> Pretty much covered just about everything I could say, but <laughs> <laughs> I would say that, you know, just don't think of it as being a diet. I hate that word because it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle change and it's for the better. It's for better health, better for the environment and better for the animals. How, what, what else can it be? Can it be better? It's, it's a win, win, win situation. I just, I, I don't try to preach to anybody about this diet. If someone asks me a question, I'd be more than willing to answer the question as honestly as I can. But I just, people cannot be forced into it. They have to want to change on their own. And it's not, it's hard at first, but give yourself a couple of months. It'll all work out. I promise you. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And and you guys, if you have had and heard any pearls of wisdom and things that you have think that are a takeaway, type it in the comments so that when people are coming over to take a look at the video that they can see what you thought was something that you wanted to remember. And please stay tuned for a special announcement. I do want to thank Rebecca from PKA Sols. She has been with me on this broadcast for almost one year. Um, and she has been helping me and helping our guests to be the best that they can be. And to and she's been there. She's hi, Rebecca. And she's been put, posting comments and links and, and just making it so that I can enjoy my time with my special guests as I am today with Esther and Ben. And I also wanted to thank Jess from Jess Has Voice. She did the countdown. She did the voiceovers for the promos and so forth. And Jess Has Voice, who's coming up next? Depressed? Anxious? Is it possible to titrate down or eliminate prescription medication? Dr. Melissa Mandala is a triple specialist of family medicine, lifestyle medicine, and primary care psychiatry with PlantItForward.com. Join us on Monday, December 27th, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, on Be Green with Amy, live. Well, I want to thank again Esther and Ben for being here. Most of all, I want to thank you guys because you have found be Green with Amy. And you have found that I have wonderful guests and wonderful videos on my channel. I hope you'll subscribe and share and tell the world about this lifestyle. Watch broadcasts like this and check out Esther's Facebook page that we have shared with you. And just keep this in your wheelhouse every day. Listen to a podcast, which I Be Green with Amy has podcasts. Listen to a, a video or watch something or read Esther's book. Just keep doing this and you can stay on track with this lifestyle and get tremendous health benefits. And that's that's why I'm here. And that's why Esther and Ben are here, because we have found tremendous health benefits with this lifestyle. And we wanted to share it with the world. And thank you for showing up, Green Warriors, to help us to do that. And before I go, I want you all guys, if you can type in the comments below my tagline, which is be strong, be well, and be Green. green and also esther and ben are gonna do that with me are you guys ready yes okay we're gonna do it together here we go until i see you guys again remember be strong be well and be green, green. <laughs> bye bye everyone Now you can listen to Be Green with Amy expert interviews wherever you go. Listen while walking, meal prepping, or traveling. Find Be Green with Amy on Apple, Google, Alexa, Amazon, or virtually anywhere you find podcasts. Be strong. Be well.